Yes. And I have heard more about financial wellness from employers in the last year, year and a half than probably the entire rest of my career combined. I'm assuming your experience is the same. Yeah, it's it's top of mind for people. Um, I think it's always nice to remind people that, you know, the fundamental relationship between employee and employer is financial. Um, they're not just volunteers. Mm -hmm. They're working there for money. So especially the younger generations, I think, are coming in and really leaning more heavily on employers for financial resources. Um, and so I think it's a new pressure on employers. Uh, obviously, the pandemic showed us that a lot of people did not have things to fall back on. Um, should the unpredictable happen. And so it's really about just encouraging people to think about their financial stability and what actions they can take now to make next year better than this year. I have this theory. It's it's not very well worked out in my head yet. So bear with mm -hmm. me. But yeah. I have this theory that as, as the population of the United States and, and the world really, but as communities grow larger, that some of the community structures are falling the falling away and that employers mm -hmm. or at least forward thinking employers are building back those communities in their work site is do you see that yeah because i think that there are um you know populate there are certain communities who i think need more resources and more help so mm -hmm. that's an opportunity for employers to really differentiate themselves if they want that pool of candidates to work for them you know they've got to show them that their concerns are important and top of mind and address them where they are um so i think not just generationally but i think also just where people are living and and mm -hmm. there, there's different concerns that people have so you know, nobody is a monolith. Like, you know, we have to really be diversified in our approach to appealing to to the masses, um, especially because there's such a problem with attrition and turnover. And a lot of employers are really struggling with that. So some, you know, like some recent things like the Secure Act 2.0 that, that was passed, which was really the first piece of federal legislation around emergency savings. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't really mandate anything for emergency savings. It just really enabled um, some options there. So it creates a competitive lane for employers who really want to be proactive and see this as a way to differentiate themselves as an employer for choi of choice for those employees who really are feeling financial stress, um, that we can give them more assets and resources that they wouldn't have if they weren't an employee here.